Well folks, welcome back to Geek Smart and today we're looking at a product that goes in today's smart home that's a little bit different. This is the package butler that allows you to, well, receive notifications when you receive letters or packages, um, control it remotely, cameras, everything. It's kind of a neat device that, uh, well, I'm looking forward to checking out. Hey guys, welcome back to Geeksmart, and today we are setting up the package butler. So, essentially the thing about this is that it allows you to, it basically replaces the mailbox on your porch, or on your, the front of your house, or wherever you have your mailbox at. Um, you can receive letters of this, but mainly it's designed for packages. So essentially when FedEx or UPS or the Postal Service man comes and delivers a package to you, it allows you to secure that package within this box so it literally can't be stolen. Uh, you get notifications when you receive it. Um, there's a lot of really nice things about it that, at least on paper, it sounds great. Uh, and I can't wait to, sh to get into it and see how it actually works. So let's start this video by tearing into the package and getting it out of the box. So this is actually how it came. This is the, the actual box of the product, but this is how it shipped. So um, we're going to go ahead and tear into this bad boy. It does come with a box of accessories, so don't toss that away. It is just a, a plain box. We have the drilling template. So in my case, I'm putting it on top of a cap porch, so I'm not going to be able to drill into it for this video. But this is the template, and we'll go over this here shortly, where you can use a hammer drill and actually drill the four corners and anchor this to the concrete, basically to wherever you're going to place it. Um, like I said, I'm not doing that in this video. I understand I kind of wanted to, but I don't really have a spot yet that I can put this and in, in anchor it specifically, but especially in those areas that you really wanted to make sure you're secured, this is there and they do give you the anchors, I believe, too, in the box. We'll go over that here in a second. I'll clean up, I'll be right back. Okay, so before we go over the, the item itself, we're going to look at the accessories that came with this guy real quick. So there shouldn't be too many in here. Um, looks like instructions, of course. Uh, we did get the template. The template's not in this package. Obviously, I showed you that already. There's the power cord to power it. There's going to be the four anchors. Um, looks like nut covers for those anchors as well. So these are just sleeve anchors. They look like they gave... Yeah, there's the anchors. Um, and then when you tighten it down on there, they do have a nice cap to go over that so you don't see just the anchor there. So it does make it look a little nicer. Now, this is something to point out, is that even though you anchored this to the concrete with this, somebody could still technically take a wrench. It would just take a lot longer for them to take this box than if it was anchored down. Same thing goes, this is a lot heavier than the package, so it's not going to be really easy for somebody to walk off with this than it would be with your pa uh, with your package by itself. So that's something else to bring up. Looks like there are a couple acorn nuts in here for something. Uh, looks like little brass colored ones. And then there are keys. So if um, you can open this remotely from the app, but obviously if the internet's not working or whatever, you still have a physical way in. Uh, that's wonderful to see that they actually include that. Let's see what else comes with this. So this, the acorn nuts are probably for the sign. So the sign here tells all your delivery drivers, please scan the barcode. There's a scanner out front, and then you can leave your own message here at the bottom. Um, does it just pop out or slide out? Oh, it's is it magnetic? It's magnetic. Oh, that's cool. So there's your sign. You place it in there. You can actually print it out on your printer, and it's just magnetic. There's just four magnets in the corners that holds the sign. And then this sign should actually attach, yep, looks like back here, just like that. And that's what those two acorn nets are for, is to, to attach the sign. We'll do that here shortly. And then we actually have the instruction manual itself, which goes through everything. Should. Um, let's look at the product itself. All right, we're going to start at the front, then we'll move to the back. So we have our code scanner, which actually is a scanner here on the front. Nice little white box, pretty easy to see. There is a mail slot, even labeled mail, so you can actually put the mail in here and it's protected. Down here we actually have the parcel box right now, it's shut. 
Let me see if I can grab the key quick and open it. So on the side, there's just a little door that you can put the key in. Looks like. Haha! <laughs> just opens up. And there's two doors, a small door and a top door. I don't know why there's two. There might be some reason for that that I don't know, but either way. Yep, that's just, it pops in. Once you shut it, it locks automatically, and that's how you do it. So, uh, right now, obviously, it's not anchored down, so it's a little wobbly. And then uh, I'll show you the side here where that, that cap is here in a second. On the front, there looks like there's speakers here. There's a power there for net network, and then uh, a li or lights are in the light for power. And then there's a camera up here that's actually uh, probably seeing who recording who's actually there. So uh, let's show the side and then the back. So on the, technically, if you're looking from the f at the front on the right side, right, this is where that little pop is. That's where the key goes in to uh, to release. Looks like it is a one-way key, so it has to go in this way. It can't be put in both directions. So. Not that that's a big deal, just something to know. And uh, you just turn it and it pops it. And it only turns in one direction, that's it. I'll show you the back. Okay, down below there's nothing. So just up here we have a uh, water seal box. In here that's where your power cord is going to plug in. And there is also an ethernet port here. So if you want to wire it to internet, you can. Otherwise, this little antenna right here, this is your Wi-Fi antenna. So that'll pick up your Wi-Fi. If you don't want to wire it, you can do wireless as well. So either way, it gives you the benefit. Um, these are the two stubs right here. And that's for that sign. That sign, which we're going to do right now, actually. Slips onto here, and then the two acorn nuts go there. Let me get the acorn nuts real quick. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the sign on facing, obviously, toward the front. Spin these nuts on in place. I wonder if there should be a washer maybe in there too. Yes, there is. There are two small lock washers actually, or split washers. That goes on first. So you put that on first, then the acorn nut. We'll get the other one off too. And it looks like it's a seven millimeter. Um, probably do it with a 930 second as well. Just tighten it. Don't go crazy, you know, nice and firm. Nice and firm. So now our sign is attached. Uh, so I thought I'd inspect the bottom of it a little bit to see what the plate looks like. So you can see the I have the unit on its side, not the side with the key, the opposite side that doesn't have anything. And I put it on some cardboard, but I wanted to take a peek at the base plate. So this is what obviously is what you're anchoring to. So when you put the holes in, you know, the anchors are going to come up through these four holes. Well, this is just a, a base plate that's attached to the unit. So if you were in a, in, a, in a spot where you can keep it up out of the water, in my case, I'm putting it on a front porch that does not get rain because it's a covered porch. It, I don't get wet. It doesn't get wet up here. So I could actually theoretically take this base plate off and go direct with the with it as well. It's an option. I'm not going to do it, but it is there. Just wanted to at least bring it up to the point where that's, they actually have it attached. Now, you have to actually remove a plate on the inside to get to where these attachment points bolts are, but just something at least so I'm fully open and honest about this. So I have a, a power cord down here. I have the power cord plugged into the wall. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug it into the actual device itself and see how it does to start the setup process. We're gonna do the setup over Wi-Fi. Uh, using the antenna there, um, because let's be honest, most people aren't going to have an Ethernet connection on their front porch or wherever you're placing this device. If you have the capability of running Ethernet, I always am a huge fan of wiring everything possible. But in this case, just power cord is going to plug into the power outlet right here in the back. It's going to plug in, and then this is going to shut, and you can actually hear it. So it's going to, you know, it's going to be a little bit before this uh, gets in. I would like to see where this uh, plate actually has a latch so it actually latches closed so it can't blow around. That'd be something that I would recommend maybe adding. Um, this is something that maybe, you know, you could obviously put some tape or something just to hold it because we don't want water coming in from the side. The bottom isn't going to be a big issue. Just let drainage out if anything gets in. But that said, we're powered up. Let's turn it around. Let's open the app, I guess. Okay, by the time I got it turned around, 
It literally just said welcome to me. It it told me welcome on the front. These, both the network and the power lights were blinking. Now the power light is on, the network light is off. And that's just because it hasn't been given the, well, what network and password to connect to yet. So um, it told, told me welcome, and I'm assuming that we're gonna be on the app next. So in the book, it does give you a QR code real quick to get to the app from either the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. Uh, I just went, I used this QR code to get to the official app. I just got done downloading it. Let's open it and check it out. So they do recommend making sure you have Bluetooth turned on as well as making sure you're within 10 feet of the unit because that's how it's actually going to connect uh, originally, I guess, or specifically for, at first, uh, is through Bluetooth. So we're going to head and open up the Package Butler app. I'm okay with it sending me notifications. And we're going to hit start. Put in your phone number to continue. Let me do that real quick. Phone number is in. Let's hit next. It's going to receive a code from that phone number. In order. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit go and put in uh, 0308. Hit next. And now we put in our delivery information. So it's going to be first name, last name, email, zip code, state, city, and address. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll be right back. So I just put my information in. Hit next. For delivery information, um, looks like there's a uh, credit card and expiration and CVV number. So that's going to be their, I think it's 10 cents a month or whatever it is for their uh, their delivery information currently. But this is where you would put your credit card in to have that on file. Okay, so I put in my credit card information, hit next. This is going to be activate your home locker. Please stay within 10 feet. I'm going to hit next. Make sure it's plugged in and the red power light is on, which we are still currently good and on. Hit next. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to use Bluetooth. Oh, looks like it's connecting. Successfully connected. We're going to go ahead and do Wi-Fi. So we're going to hit next. And if you did wired, you just select wired. Package Burler wants you to use location. Uh, I'm okay with while I'm using the app. I'm going to put in the password for my Wi-Fi. And then I'll hit connect. Connecting to Wi-Fi. And look at that. It even tell me it's connecting to Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi connection was successful. Successfully connected. So step four, let's hit finish. Connecting to home locker. And on the front, that white, that network light is now green. So we are connected to network. Successfully connected to home locker. And we already hit finish, so it should go in. Let's hit, see what happens here. Oh, we just click on it. Do you want to subscribe to Package Butler now? Sure, let's hit subscribe. And looks like there's my subscription, there's my credit card and everything. We're going to hit subscribe. Yep, so it's 10 cents a month, which is very inexpensive to be honest about it. I'm amazed that it's that cheap. Let's hit subscribe. Subscribe. Subscri successfully subscribed and hit OK. And then you can see your subscription, your payment history. And uh, right now I'm good through the April 21st because it's, today's the 21st of March. Close that down. And we'll click on the lock key again. I'm going to hit open. And it actually opened my locker up. All right, well, let's see what else. It even notifies you that the locker is open. Let's see what else we got here before we actually go back to the unit and show you that. So we hit my packages, arrived, history, and so it'll actually have a history of all your arrived packages too. So we'll actually see what happens in the end when all these people actually use this. Uh, my home locker. So it tells you the information, the address it's at, the social, the, uh, what would be the serial number, sorry, registration time when you actually registered it. Settings, let's go to settings. Uh, let's go to my locker settings, uh, which is just the information on it. Looks like my account settings, just your phone, email, and uh, PBID, whichever, whatever that means for them, I guess. You can sign out if you need to sign out. It's pretty simple. Um, you know, it just shows you that information. I'd like to see what happens when we actually get uh, a package delivered. So that's going to be interesting. So let's see here. So we do have the lower compartment here, which has its own little door, right? And the upper one. But obviously, look, right now it's set up as one continuous. But it looks as though, and the instructions are not very good at saying about this, but I should take this wing net off here. It looks. Yep, there it is. You can just actually lower this down. 
and now we actually have two compartments and when a large package comes in here you're not going to be able to get into it from there so it it separates things out a little bit so there is that um it's an option it just looks like they they put them as an, as an optional item and you can just choose to not use it and just keep the wing net on here so one thing to point out another item i wanted to point out is this window right here uh, as you can see right now there's nothing there it's just black head however you can put your address here essentially like just your your four digit or five, whatever your actual street address here um, on the back back here there's actually well actually just has a piece of black paper that you can pull out you can even actually take the acorn nuts off on this right here and uh, remove it put whatever you need to go there so it just allows you to slip in your address um, like you would do on a normal mailbox um, if well, in this case, I'm going to be right underneath the block lettering on my house, so it's not that big of a deal, but I'm probably going to put my, my address here as well. Just a Creole Kick demo, so I'm not going to open it with the key. I'm actually going to open it with the app itself. I'm going to hit the unlock button, hit open, and then she pops open. Just the main door, it looks like it, that's the only one that's actually going to pop open in this one. So I'll put a package in or whatever, and then I can close it. And uh, Thank you for using Package Butler. And it tells you, hey, thank you for using it. So obviously whether or not a carrier is scanning a package, putting it in, or you open it for allowing somebody to put something in, it tells them thank you, which is nice. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually show you how, when we actually do a delivery or whichever, we're gonna pretend we have a package that should fit in here and also one that won't fit in here. So first one, and I will show you that there are a couple bar codes on this one. The one that actually came on this box is actually a, looks like a, PayPal postage or a an eBay postage one That one I cannot get to scan No matter what I do. I can't get it to scan. I have a USPS one here that I just taped on the box real quick from a, a different package and That one scans quick and easy Please open the door and that's so when you scan it That's what opens up the main compartment here and essentially what it is is it's a drop box right? There's there's a plate that comes in right here that keeps them from actually reaching in and grabbing something else. So even if they have something else to scan, they scan it. They can't get your other packages. So, cube here. I'm going to shut it. Thank you for using Package Butler. Tells me I'm good. And the funny thing is, I get a text message on my phone saying that a package has been delivered. It also records the time and everything. Now I have a box here that has uh, another... USPS. This is another post service one, but this isn't a PayPal one or an eBay one. And that one scans just fine. Please but this box is too big, right? I cannot keep this guy in here, so no matter what I do. So you're either going to have one of two things. They're going to leave it like that, which again, shouldn't be that big of a deal. But uh, I would be going to put it on my side here. If package is too large, you can just sit off to the side and close the door. Thank you for using Package Butler. So it doesn't really matter which, you know, service you use. However, there are going to be ones that will not scan. And so I would also probably put that as part of your sign saying, hey, if it doesn't scan, just leave it off to the side. Thank you anyway. So real quick, you can see I get a text message in my phone saying that I, you know, uh, a new package is in your locker. Um, let me go ahead and open up the app. Okay, so we open up the Package Butler app and Interesting, it had me re-verify my phone number, but as soon as I did it, it came in. You can see that, it, well, technically I scanned a few and they're trying different ones off, off camera. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and actually click over here and hit, see uh, my packages. And we can see all the packages, the five packages that were delivered. <laughs> uh, and within we, here we can actually see the time it was delivered and the tracking number of that delivery. So yeah, we can go through any of these and find out any of that information. We can also go to history. Right now we shouldn't have any history, right? Because I haven't opened it technically since I started receiving packages. But now, um, if I click open, let's hit open the locker. Click, there it goes. It says my locker is open. I can take my package. Shut it. Thank you for using Package Butler. Now to point out we don't have the five items here. Let's head into my packages. Arrived has now been cleared out because we opened and took the packages. If we go to history, now we can see the five packages in our history that we technically had received today. So, there we go. Couple items to note here. One is not every package is going to fit in here. All right, that's just going to be the truth of it. 
But the nice thing is, if they do scan it, then you'll at least get a notification for sure, uh, if you don't already from your other package carriers. Um, but that way you get it for sure. Second thing, if you open it from the key on the side, it doesn't clear out and put your current packages into your history file. You have to open it from the app. At least that's what I've noticed so far, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. Um, that way it still stays in the thing knowing that you should have received something today and you come home and there's not something there. Well, then you know somebody opened it with the key, other family member, whatever. Um, so I would say the, the key is kind of a backup situation. If there's no network or powers out, you can at least get into this box here. Uh, but it, the app is going to be your primary method. Finished doing my install video, but I'm out here. I'm going to unplug it. I didn't see this little rubber guy. There's a memory card right here. 16 gigs is what they give you. I want to take a peek what's on this because I'm assuming that's where it's actually saving the video files, but I don't see a way of actually accessing it remotely. But I still want to see it. One other item of note is that there is a camera. Outside of the actual code scanner, there is a 24-7 surveillance camera that's supposed to, I guess, have a storage capacity after so many days. I still don't know how to access that. Uh, I don't see it in the app, the Package Butler app, at all. And I don't know if they just keep it on file and that way you can pull it off if, hey, you, you know, whatever, you dispute something, they can pull it off. I think that's sad. It should be part of the app. Maybe they, they're, they're planning on it but th because this is a new product. Not everything is maybe fully functional yet. Um, I know that they're pushing these out at a really, really good price right now for people that are getting into it early. Uh, Package Butler actually sent this to me. Um, they asked me if I would be willing to do a review. I thought it looked like a really neat product. Uh, I think it fits a market that specifically if you're in a spot that you have a lot of package thefts, and that happens across the United States, and not just in the US, but uh, it happens a lot of places. Where I live, not so much, I'll be honest about it, but I'm not gonna say that's gonna last forever, right? You never know. Um, my community actually was ranked one of the top 12, I think, safest larger cities in the, the entire country, which is awesome, uh, but that's not everywhere, right? And so this fits a niche that is fantastic and allows at least the smaller packages to get into a spot where they're going to be a lot harder to grab at or, or get access to. Um, so it just makes you feel more comfortable. Uh, and if nothing else, it gives you another method of instantaneous notification when you receive the delivery. I know a lot. Uh, I have all of the apps for all of the carriers on my phone um, that I get notifications when things are delivered and they're pretty good and they're pretty accurate. But that doesn't mean that somebody's here to pull, pull it inside the house, right? Somebody could easily just jump up on the porch and grab it. Even though I knew it was delivered, I'm out of luck because it's a small product of edges and she's gone. Now I have cameras all over the front of my house too. So I'm gonna have 24 hour surveillance in that method. Not everybody has that. But this fits a fantastic category. I can't wait to try it out over time. Specifically with as many packages as I get delivered here, I want to see how the mailman and the FedEx guy and the UPS guy actually go with it. Um, it's designed for contactless delivery where it gets locked up without you having to worry about it and then you can open it remotely at any time. Um, so yeah, it just it fits a, a, an item that I have never seen specifically yet. I think it's got a bright future. I think it's got a few things to update. I'd like to see um, a way to, to lock this uh, power cord piece back here. Um, and then I'd also like to see it, I, I, I have tried this personally already, unplugging it for a couple minutes and then plugging it back in. You do not get notified if this loses power or uh, network connection. I think that would be another thing that Package Butler should add onto this. Now, this isn't a review, this is a setup video, but I did want to give a few of my thoughts on here. As I use it, the review video is going to be next. So, so looking at this in the computer, you can see there's a whole bunch of files. And if I play it here, you can see there's no audio, but you can obviously see the clarity is not bad for being in such a small file. Um, looks like each of these videos is two and a half minutes long, give or take. And the size of it is, uh, let's just take a peek at this one right here. Let's get info. 52 megabytes. So we can get a lot of files in here. The crazy thing is, is that over half of these are of me. I think a lot of these are from when they actually made it in the factory. Because you can see the fa this is in my house. I just find that a little bit interesting. I actually went through a few of them. Um, you can see people actually working on it, programming it. 
I find that I find that kind of funny. But there it is. That's that you can actually access it yourself if you need to. They are on the on the memory card, and so I'm going to leave the memory card go where it is. That's something I think that they need to add though is access from the app. Thank you, Package Butler, for allowing me to to test this guy. Um, like I said, I did not do the installation of um, the actual anchor bolts. All you do is you center this up. You know, I would actually put this exactly where you wanted it. Personally, if I, if I was going to do it, this is a great uh, secondary checking method, but I would actually place this exactly where I wanted it and then use a marker or something to, or a piece of chalk or something to mark the four holes locations. And then I'd line up those four holes with this and drill through the template. But that way, you know, you got it exactly as far away from the wall as you wanted it, exactly where you wanted it, rather than guessing with this. It's just something that's in addition. Or you can place this on the ground, put this on top of it, making sure all of them are lined up. Leave this on the ground and take this back off. So it's just a couple different ways that you can actually get this anchored properly as well. In my case, I'm not anchoring it because, like I said again, I'm on a capped porch. So there's a room directly beneath me. I don't know how thick this capped porch is. I'm not about to drill holes in it, I'll be honest with you. Um, so, in the end, I may actually uh, pour my own little concrete pad next to my front porch, which it will be out a little bit more in the elements, uh, but it'll be off the porch then. And then, uh, if I do that, I'll make a video of it. So, thank you, Package Brother, for allowing me to do this video. Thank you for watching, and I will put links to the full video review once I have it finished not only in the description, at the end of the video here, and as a card. So, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you back here on GeekSmart for another video setup and tutorial. We'll see you soon.